This hour of the Costa Report is brought to you by Dole Food Company, the world's leading producer and distributor of fresh fruits and vegetables. Welcome to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and thank you for joining me for another two hours of Straight Talk Radio. Let me take a moment to welcome our men and women in the armed forces who are joining us over the Internet, as well as new listeners tuning in on affiliates in Florida, Texas, Maine, Idaho, Illinois, New York, and throughout all 50 states. I appreciated so much hearing from many of you over the holidays, and I want to thank you for your emails, your cards, your letters, and wish you and yours a happy and very safe holiday season. And speaking of safety... How many listeners today think legalizing marijuana is not only safe, but also good for the U.S. economy? Well, judging from the fact that voters in California, Massachusetts, Maine, and Nevada recently voted in favor of legalizing the recreational use of marijuana, joining Colorado, Alaska, Washington, and Oregon, where the use of the drug is already legal, I'd say there's ample evidence our views are shifting. The fact is 26 states now permit the use of marijuana in certain forms and under certain circumstances. And in just a moment, former governor of Minnesota and author of the blockbuster book, The Marijuana Manifesto, Mr. Jesse Ventura will be joining us to explain why possession and use of marijuana remains a federal offense in spite of the fact that 61% of Americans want legalization. But before Mr. Ventura joins us, as is my custom each week, let me tell you a little about his background. James George Janos was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and he served in the U.S. Navy during the Vietnam War. At the end of his service, he began a regiment of serious weightlifting and wrestling. And even for a brief period of time, he worked as a bodyguard for the Rolling Stones. It wasn't long before he adopted the name that we all know him by, Jesse the Body Ventura, during his successful wrestling career. A career that was so successful, he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2004. Ventura's political career took flight when he was elected mayor of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota in 1991, and from here he went on to become Minnesota's popular 38th governor in 1999. Ventura has had an enviable career in television, radio, and film, but what you may not know is he is also a prolific author. He has nine books to his credit, and today he's joining us to talk about his latest book and the growing momentum to decriminalize marijuana. It's my pleasure to welcome to the Costa Report, former governor of Minnesota and best-selling author, Mr. Jesse Ventura. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Ventura. My pleasure. What an introduction. I guess it shows I can't hold a job too long, does it? <laughs> well, I never I never looked at your <laughs> bio in that way. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I this is such well, a no, timely it, interview. Uh, well, you, you no, know. It, it, it's actually true, though. I, I, uh, I, I'm addicted to something called wanderlust, I guess you would call it, to where when I do things and, and achieve some success at it, I do it, and then I'm looking for something else to do. And I've lived really my whole life that way. I've never, I admire people that can have one particular job and hold it their whole life and do it well. That's just not me. I've had multiple careers and multiple jobs, and I don't want to get old and say woulda, coulda, shoulda. Well, you know, my dad used to call those people problem solvers, and he said you could spot them because once they solved the problem, they lost interest. Maybe so. Your father might be correct, but in the world of politics, uh, your problems go on forever. <laughs> well, that that may be exactly uh, why we had the the election that we just had. Now, as you know, in California, Massachusetts, Maine, and Nevada, recently they voted to allow the recreational use of marijuana, joining Colorado, Alaska, Washington, and Oregon. The uh, SKD, Knickerbocker, and Benison Strategy Group poll currently shows that 61% of Americans support the legalization of marijuana. So in a nutshell, explain to us uh, that, you know, most of us are not really familiar with all of the laws and all of the uh, the uh, resistance to legalizing marijuana. Explain to us what the holdup is. Well, the holdup is, comes at multiple. It, it's, it's a holdup of multiple fronts. You naturally have 
the rival corporations that produce uh, the same type of thing as recreate, if we want to call it recreational, I don't like even dividing the plant up into that. Mm -hmm. The people that smoke it for the euphoric feeling are doing it for mental health. I think the whole plant is a, is a medical plant to begin with. And, uh, but you have the people for the euphoric fee people or the recreational end of it. Naturally, you got the alcohol industry doesn't want to be invaded, uh, the tobacco industry and the pharmaceutical industry on the medical side. They, they like to have the market cornered and they don't want some entity coming in that's as common as a plant growing that can truly help people. And let me back up for a moment and explain why I'm so passionate on this issue now. It gave me my quality of life back. Not me directly, but someone very close to me started suffering an epileptic seizure disorder and was seizing uh, two to three times a week. And if you've ever dealt with seizures as the person dealing with them, they're horrific. You can't do anything. You can just comfort the person, ensure their safety, and hope they come out of it. And that's what my life had turned into. And this person was put on four different pharmaceutical medicines. None of them worked. Seizures continued. In desperation, we went to Colorado, got, quote, medical marijuana, three drops under the tongue three times a day. The seizures stopped. And I can tell you unequivocally, the person has not had a seizure now in two and a half years and is completely weaned off all pharmaceutical medicine. It, it, the person was cured completely by cannabis. So let's talk about how we can speak about it in a more logical and scientific way. I agree. I don't think we should have a term called recreational use. We should either call it mental health use or physical health use. Would exactly. you agree with that? Absolutely. Because, you know, those that smoke it for the euphoric feeling, I'd rather have them taking a hit of pot than be put on Prozac. Well, there, it's, there's something is driving them toward needing that release, needing that relaxation, or needing that euphoric feeling. It's I mean, it's the life. same. Right. Well, <laughs> it, it can be life, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean at, at the end of the day, I don't get it. People come home and they have a glass of wine or they drink beer at the end of the day. What is wrong with coming home and smoking marijuana at the end of the day? But more importantly, you know, it, it, let's just put aside the issue of whether it's right or wrong for a moment. In your book, The Marijuana Manifesto, you point out that this war on drugs started during the Nixon administration. It's been going on for 45 years, and it's cost U.S. citizens over a trillion dollars. And where have we gotten? Nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. In fact, we're now on the verge of, as you stated on the outset of the show, there's 25, 26 states that have legalized in some manner. The list is growing. Every election, it grows more, and it will continue. The interesting thing I saw the other day, okay, Donald Trump is running, telling his big campaign was bringing back jobs. Yep. The smartest thing he could do right now is support legalization of cannabis because the results are in. Colorado in the Wall Street Journal, 18,000 new jobs mm -hmm. simply because of the marijuana industry. And what was its full economic impact on the state? 2.4 billion. Mm -hmm. Yes, we had uh, John Hickenlooper on the program a couple of months ago. And, you know, he was the first to admit that all of the fears that he had, because he opposed, you know, he opposed the legalization in his state uh, as governor. But uh, once the people voted it through, uh, he said he put it through. And he said in every fear that he has, uh, that he had at the time has not materialized. That's right. In fact, one of the real big ones that they always say and this is for the recreational end, if you want to speak of it that way. Oh, it's a gateway drug to harder drugs. Mm -hmm. It's being totally debunked now because every state that's legalized, the use of heroin has dropped. It has not gone up. It's gone down. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to take our first break, sure. but stay right where you are. We'll be back with more from Jesse Ventura. You're listening to The Costa Report. Biodiversity is the very fabric of our lives. It is everything around us, all of nature, but human impact is diminishing biodiversity at an alarming rate. 
And because of that, the intricate web of biodiversity is unraveling in ways we don't fully understand, and our world is becoming less resilient. That's why we are biodiversity advocates. We're the E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Foundation. Guided by the greatest living naturalist, E.O. Wilson, we champion research and education that expands our understanding of biodiversity and informs worldwide conservation efforts. The E.O. Wilson Biodiversity Foundation is building a movement of environmental stewards like you who share our sense of responsibility for the living world that is our home. Join us in our quest to protect biodiversity, the fabric of our lives. Visit eowilsonfoundation.org. The holiday season is just around the corner, and I want to share one of my favorite tips for being able to avoid that last-minute dash to buy something that screams, I didn't put much thought into this. Now imagine a different scenario this year. Imagine the surprise on your loved one's face when they open the first page of the Watchman's Rattle and see a custom dedication in their name by the author. The best part is it's so easy. Just go to RebeccaCosta.com, do it right now, and click on the book cover and presto. In less than three minutes, you can request the inscription you want. So do it now. Go to RebeccaCosta.com, and this year, give an affordable, thoughtful gift that says, this is for you and only you. That's RebeccaCosta.com. Remember Kay's commentaries? Most people thought they were great, but a few weirdos thought they were hateful. Anyhow, this year I'm reminding you early that if you want to really impress people on your holiday gift list, give Kay's book of her greatest commentaries. For KSCO, I'm Kay's Whirling. I challenge you to come up with a better gift for a thinking, non-weirdo person. We have so many cases of Kay's book on hand that we need to reclaim some of the precious space at the station, and we want you to be the beneficiary. The deal is now incredible. $10 per book instead of the $24.95 original price. But it gets better. Buy a case of 28 of Kay's books to use as gifts for about $3.50 per book. Way less than our cost. $99 per case of 28. That's less than $3.55 per book. It's available by emailing me, mz at ksco.com, or just come by the station anytime to buy Kay's book in any quantity. Recently on Good Morning Monterey Bay, our throwback ad is the inappropriate Chinese baby jello ad. Back to present ancient Chinese pantomime, just for fun of it, jello tonight. Small Chinese Thai baby, Chinese mother bling baby, jello. Yeah, it's visual, but he was using chopsticks to eat the jello. When do Chinese babies learn to use chopsticks? Is it pretty early? I would think from the get go is. From like, the get-go, like breastfeeding? No, no. <laughs> like, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? Start picking at mom? <laughs> yes, it would be weird. <laughs> Have to watch out for splinters. You know he's hungry because he's just he's rubbing them together to get the <laughs> splinters off? <laughs> we'll come back. Yeah, traffic now, Highway 1. Don't miss Good Morning Monterey Bay, 6 to 9, Monday through Friday on KSCO. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and my guest today is professional professional wrestler, wrestler, actor, actor, author, author, and former governor of Minnesota, the ever-popular Jesse Ventura. Ventura. Now, many Americans Americans don't don't realize realize that marijuana marijuana is still classified by the federal government as a Schedule I narcotic, the same classification for heroin and opium. So if a person is arrested and convicted for possession, it's actually a felony. Is that right? Oh, uh, yeah, at the federal level it is. And what's interesting about that, Rebecca, is that it's the DEA who makes that determination of that policy. Now, how ridiculous is that? It's the only place you'll see law enforcement determining what the law will be. And because it's scheduled one, only the DEA can approve uh, uh, what can what research can be done and in what way and all this other stuff inside our own country. It's utterly ridiculous. We don't treat any other thing 
the way we treat marijuana. So how does that get changed? I mean, how, how do, because in the United States, if you're convicted of a felony, you're subject to lose rights. For example, you can lose the right to own a gun, the right to vote, even the right to operate a vehicle. We don't generally think of these kinds of punishments when it comes to marijuana possession and use. But the fact is, is that if you are convicted of a felony, a, a judge can remove those rights from you. Absolutely. You know, the discretion is there when, when, when they make the crime a felony, which is utterly absurd. When you, when you, I mean, think of this for a moment, Rebecca. George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, if they were alive today, they would be raided by the DEA and they'd probably be doing 10 to 12 years in a federal penitentiary as major drug dealers. There you go. Uh, because they both raised marijuana hemp, cannabis, whatever you want to call it, that was their major cash crop. The one unique thing I learned in doing the history and the research for this book was that we've been lied to. Marijuana was actually the economic driving force of this country for its first 100 years or more. The only reason it was displaced in the South was when they invented the cotton gin, Mm -hmm. which allowed them to process cotton in a better, more efficient manner than they could hemp, marijuana, or cannabis. It became a more profitable crop. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but the point is, there was a point in the early day. Well, look at it this way. Our, Our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, and Betsy Ross's original flag are all made out of marijuana. (laughs) <laughs> well, I never, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> well, they are. That's a fact. <laughs> that's that's now, right. Out of hemp. If if yeah. that doesn't make fabrics. them all American, what would? Yeah. So so tell me, what happens if all the states legalize marijuana use? Does that change the federal statutes? I would think that, that the feds would then have to react. Right now, they in my but that opinion, would be they, under the jurisdiction of the DEA. Is that right? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I, I don't know it to that level. But to me, the feds will have to, if if they continue, and the good thing is what I heard is President Trump has stated he's going to leave it a state's rights issue. Well, if he continues to do that, then eventually I believe all 50 states are going to pass it because they're going to see the the money. They're going to see the jobs. They're going to see the everything, the, all the negatives. They but even if they do pass it, Colorado didn't happen. Yeah, but even if they do pass it, I happen to have a legal scholar to my right here in the studio, and he says, uh, it, it uh, in order to get marijuana taken off of the Schedule One uh, description, uh, it would take an act of Congress. Well, then that'll happen once all the states legalize, because uh, the big thing, this could be the issue of the people. Because it's Washington that's stopping it. As you said, the majority of people want it. This can be an opportunity for the people to rise up and tell Washington and send a message that I would love to see them send. And that is, we are the boss. We are in charge. You work for us. We don't work for you. Well, that's because already lost, happening. 26 states have already gone against the federal state Well, laws. and it needs to continue to happen mm-hmm. because we need to show them that they're there to do our will. We're not here to carry out theirs. Now, another problem with having states legalize marijuana use and not changing the federal law is that banking and the mortgage industry have yep. their hands tied. They can't legally accept money earned from the sale of illegal drugs, and they can't lend to entrepreneurs who may want to buy land to grow crops or buildings to process product. Um, This was unanticipated in Colorado. Uh, Do you know if that's been resolved? No, because it's the feds that have to resolve it. They're working around it. It's a strictly cash business right now. Yeah, the banking industry is controlled by the feds, and you cannot accept money from illegal means. Even though they do, isn't it interesting? (laughs) <laughs> our first recession, no, our first recession in 2003, 2002, before the big one, the banks had a recession because they, the, the Taliban had shut down the poppy fields in Afghanistan and all that illegal heroin money wasn't floating through the national banks and being laundered. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that's why, come, how come we had that first minor recession? And then, of course, we had the big one a couple years later. So this idea that it's been legalized for recreational use in these states and then suddenly now people are going to go out and buy massive fields and start building up the marijuana industry, it's a cash-only business. Yeah, pretty much. And the sad thing is it's still not truly legal. 
Mm-hmm. Th- think about this a moment. I could leave today. I'm in Minnesota. I could drive my pickup truck to Colorado tomorrow, mm-hmm. and I could only buy one ounce of marijuana, I believe. It used to be a half an ounce if you're out of state, but normally I heard they, they made it one ounce now. Mm-hmm. Yet I could drive there and buy all the tobacco that I could fill my truck up with, or I could buy all the alcohol that I wanted to fill up my truck with as long as my credit card could handle the price. Mm -hmm. So it isn't truly legal yet because you ought to be, if it's legal, you ought to be able to buy as much as you want. Yes, but even the president has come out and said that uh, if they're looking to legalize it on a national basis, it should be controlled like cigarettes and alcohol. How did you feel about that? Wait a minute. You can buy all the cigarettes and alcohol you want, can't you? That is true. There you go. That is... Put it the same as cigarettes and alcohol. That's all we're asking for. Make it identical to cigarettes and alcohol. It's like people say to me, well, what do I do if I catch my, if you legalize it and I catch my 13-year-old with pot? Mm-hmm. And I answer, I start laughing. I answer, what do you do? It's called parenting. I said, you treat that child the same way you would if you caught him with tobacco or if you caught him with alcohol. You parent. That's how you do it. But, you know, it's no different. Treat it identical to tobacco and alcohol. Well, I I agree with you. I agree with you. And I would only add to that the first time you catch them, come down like, you know, a blaze of glory on your kid. Because, you know, if you don't if you don't make it so uncomfortable the first time, they'll test you and try it again. My son, I remember he and four boys, they thought they were really cool. They snuck one beer out of some boy's house and split it between the four of them, and we got wind of it, and, and uh, he, was, he, he was never so miserable. <laughs> I think <laughs> well, about it now, a, a quarter I, of a can of beer, you know, what kind of parent was I? But I am glad I came well, down on him. Well, you were parenting. You were doing what all parents should do. They're children, and they have to understand that certain things you can't do until you're an adult. That's and, right. And, and marijuana, and, well, it doesn't matter if it's a beer or it's marijuana or it's uh, taking, you know, a bottle of aspirin out of it. Well, well, what about chewing tobacco? Well, there you go. Uh, we have to take another scheduled break sure. when we return. Mr. Ventura is going to tell us whether he has smoked marijuana. You're listening to the Costa Report. I'm here today with Scott Caraccioli of Caraccioli Cellars, recent winners of the best sparkling wine in the U.S. in the Champagne and Sparkling Wine World Championship. Congratulations, Scott. Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks for having me. So what is it about your Brut Cuvée that beat all the other competitors around the world? We really focus on creating an expression of the Santa Lucia Highlands and doing it the right way. And when you control the process from the beginning to the end and you have talent like Michelle and top-tier grapes, they really shine through. This was a worldwide competition. It was definitely a humbling experience. We were in a room with producers that have been making wine for over 100, 200 years and was a huge honor to have Tom Stevenson give us the best U.S. Sparkling Wine Award. We fared really well overall. We had three wines win best of class, which was great. Visit the Caraccioli Tasting Room on Dolores Street in Carmel by the Sea, or find us online at caracciolicellars.com, or reach us by phone, 831-622-7722. Offer not valid in all states or where prohibited by law. See website for details. Need some extra cash today? Do you have bad credit or maxed out credit cards? If so, turn your radio up. 35cash.com is one of the nation's largest personal loan networks with over 50 different lenders. Now you can get a personal loan for up to $5,000 with any type of credit discreetly from your computer or smartphone and with no paperwork to send in. That's right, no paperwork whatsoever. Your cash will hit your bank account as soon as tomorrow as our lenders have millions of dollars to lend regardless Regardless of your credit history, visit 35cash.com and you can have up to $5,000 in no time. Just have a checking account and a regular source of income and you can get the loan you need now. Regardless of your credit, go to 35cash.com from your smartphone or computer to get the cash you need. Visit 35cash.com. Type www.35cash.com directly into the address bar. That's 35cash.com. 35cash.com. Is your internet connection slow? Do you experience outages or dread calling customer support? How about your latency? Etheric Networks can help you. 
Etheric Networks is the Bay Area's locally owned alternative to DSL satellite and cable. Etheric provides fast, reliable, symmetric internet via our wholly owned network of towers covering the Bay Area from Salinas to Santa Cruz to Sausalito. We install a two-foot dish on your building and point it to one of our towers to connect you directly to the major data centers of Silicon Valley. Etheric directly connects to Tier 1 companies like Google, Facebook, and Amazon to ensure high-quality service from your building to the world. KSCO Residential Special. Residential service up to 10 megabits per second. Symmetric. That's up and down for $85 a month and $199 installation. With guaranteed minimum speeds and uptime, unlike our competitors. Etheric Networks. Call 650-399-4200. That's 650-399-4200. Etheric.net. That's E-T-H-E-R-I-C dot net. Get connected with one of California's most exciting business communities every Saturday from 2 to 3 p.m. on the Think Local First radio program. Tune in as Kat Hernandez, Sally Kane, and Andrea Molinauer from The Food Lounge, Dick Scapatoni from Little Biz, Jill Salito from Modern Life and Home, and Michael Olson from KSCO host local business people for a conversation about doing business and staying in business in Santa Cruz County. We're sitting on a narrow spit of land sandwiched between the San Andreas Fault and Great White Sharks. Folks, it just doesn't get any more exciting than doing business in Santa Cruz County, so put down your distractions and join me, Michael Olson, as I host some of the most interesting business people you meet anywhere this Saturday, 2 to 3, on Think Local First Radio. Think Local First Radio is brought to you in part by Staff of Life Natural Foods Market at 1266 Soquel Avenue in Santa Cruz. Think Local First and eat local first by shopping at Genuine Santa Cruz Tradition. The local Staff of Life Natural Foods Market. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, our guest today is Jesse Ventura. Let me ask you about the growth of edible marijuana treats like cookies, brownies, candies, and the fear that some folks have that this will appeal to young kids in the same way that the tobacco industry once targeted children. Well, certainly you have to lock things up. You don't put those things out on the coffee table for anyone to grab them, just as you wouldn't put shots of tequila out there, Mm -hmm. you know, or things of that nature. The whole thing is behave and treat it like an adult. Now, are we going to do stupid things with it? Absolutely. When you live in a free society, you can't legislate stupidity, and people will do stupid things. You know, I told my staff that once as governor. I said, that you, you, if you accept freedom, you, it's a yin and a yang. You, you're gonna, it also means the freedom to be stupid. Yes, but and, the, and still, the, the freedom to abuse that exactly, freedom. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Course. And of so course. those things are going to happen. Mm-hmm. But it, you know, in what's a free society, we, should, we don't want them to happen we'll, and deal with them when they do. Mm-hmm. But what do you have now? It's cost us trillions of dollars and and put innocent people in jail for years and that's a whole nother story how the corporate prisons have to be full so that they can earn a profit for their shareholders Mm -hmm. so it's imperative to keep the prisons full so they throw marijuana users in prison to keep them full well it is a felony (laughs) (laughs) i mean it is we've been talking about it there's no way around it you know i mean that I'm a pragmatist, but it's on the books. Well, and and it's sad, you know, that in a free society that you can allegedly commit a crime against yourself. I'd like an explanation of that by a legal Now, mind. I am sure that when you how, wrote... How can you commit a crime against well, yourself I don't know, but we're going to... Listen, if we go there, we're going to be talking about prostitution, the right to end your life if you have a terminal illness. You know, well, there's a lot of things... A there's a lot of things we should be wait, wait. able to do for ourselves. Interesting. Prostitution. The only thing that makes prostitution illegal is the exchange of money. Yes. That's all there is, because two consenting adults can meet that night. They can have all the sex they want. The only time it becomes illegal is if there's an exchange of money. Correct. So the government want, needs to be the pimp, right? The, the government doesn't want, well... Imagine if they just, uh, you know, we t- made the same argument as we make with marijuana. Just tax it. Why don't, exactly. you, why don't you tax? That's what they do in Nevada. 
Exactly. They tax prostitution, and it and it makes a lot of money in Nevada. Exactly. Yeah. But the point is, the only thing illegal is that the government's not getting their cut. Don't you follow that with I, me? The I, sex I do. isn't illegal. The sex is not illegal. It's the exchange of money. Got it. <laughs> got it. I got it. Now, look, I, I'm sure a lot of people were asking you when you decided to write the marijuana manifesto, manifesto whether you use or have used marijuana. What do you tell no, them? No, they never asked me that. I'm asking ever. you. No, they never did. I was asked that way back when I ran for governor. <laughs> which is about 14 years ago. And what and was I, your answer? I openly said I grew up in the 60s. Of course I did. Tell me anyone that didn't grow up in the 60s. If they didn't try marijuana, then they're either lying or they didn't grow up in the 60s. I don't know. I'm out here in Silicon Valley. We have some nerd types that were too afraid. I don't <laughs> think so, because uh, in the 60s, you know, I'll give it to you this way. July 25th, 1970. Why would that be an important day for me? And why would I remember it to this day? Why would it? Well, that's the day I saw Jimi Hendrix live. Oh, good so, for so, you. So that alone. Oh, I'm tells, jealous. I'm officially wait, wait, jealous. Wait, wait, that alone tells you because I remember the date that marijuana doesn't harm your memory. <laughs> there you go. There's proof. There's proof right how, there. How about when you were governor of Minnesota? Were you actively using then? No. Nope. Not a bit. No, you pulled away at that point, huh? Oh, I pulled away but way before that. I've just per- periodically used it in my life at different times. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, no, I, I didn't do You'll find if you check, there's there's not one scandal my entire time of my four years in government as governor. I do remember that, and I do remember you as governor because I remember arriving at the Minneapolis airport and seeing uh, store after store with T-shirts that said, our governor can kick your governor's blank. <laughs> right, and, and I'd like to go on the record and state that I had nothing to do with yes, that. Yes, I knew all, you had nothing to do no, with it. No, 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 those were all black market things making money <laughs> off my election. Yes, and, 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 and to that end, I'd like to say you created a lot of jobs simply by ele- being elected. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, you know, I, I don't know, but like I said, I wasn't receiving any money, and they weren't sanctioned, uh, you know, by, and I have my name copyrighted, so I guess technically I could have done something, but I, I didn't do anything. I just let it go. Well, let's talk about some more, uh, some of the other fears that people have about legalizing marijuana sure. on a national level. No one wants to have a surgeon operate on on them that's drunk or just smoked a joint, um, and they don't want a judge that's high to sentence them or even an intoxicated dentist to even pull a tooth. With alcohol, we have a way to measure. But is there an easy, cost-effective way for the police to measure the amount of marijuana a person has ingested? And, no, uh, and, that, and that's what's difficult about it because the tests are all fraudulent. I see. Uh, you, you could smoke a joint, say, 10 days ago and still test positive. Hmm. And you're certainly not under any influence of marijuana 10 days after you do it. And so, but what it does, it gets into your fatty cells, your fat tissue cells in your body. And and so you will test positive, even though it's not having any effect on you at all at that time. So we can't really set acceptable levels, can we? At this time, to my knowledge, Mm -hmm. and I'm not a scientist or anything like that, but in the research I've done, they haven't developed yet a mechanism in which to be able to determine at what point the marijuana was used and at what point the marijuana could possibly affect your thinking. So what do you say to people who are afraid that a surgeon or a judge or even a police officer could be high? Well, what do you say to them on anything? Look at the opiates that are out there right now. They're all, you, you mean the pharmaceutical all, opiates? Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, now, how many of judges and police officers and people like that are popping those pills to keep pain away? Well, we know that it is an epidemic in the That's country right. right now. That's uh, right. And, and, uh, and, and every, every heroin, I, you know, I think wait, 70 wait. to 80 percent of heroin addicts started out with pharmaceutical opioids. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Well, think of it this way. I'd rather have that doctor be on marijuana than be on an opiate when he when he operates on me well i'd like them to be on neither me too but the point <laughs> is if we're going the lesser i, I don't evils, like the idea of anyone with any knife 
being, you know, uh, having any kind of uh, altered reality. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and we all do that. And we all, it, it's, ta- it's called taking responsibility. When I talked earlier to you about parenting, it's the same thing. Use, if you do use things like that, use them responsibly and be an adult about it. And, you know, don't put yourself in a, I mean, we have 300,000 drunk drivers a day on the roads of the United States. In other countries have legalized marijuana and they have not seen an uh, uh, an increase in any appreciable crimes, you know, not, exactly. n- not an increase hey, in accidents I, on the road, nothing. There's been nothing to point to any negative outcome. None at all. And I laughingly tell people, you know, if you got somebody around you that bothers you and is obnoxious, give them a joint, a Jimi Hendrix <laughs> tape and a pizza and they won't bother you for an hour. Oh, I'd go broke. <laughs> <laughs> I'd go broke. There's too many around me. Well, then, or, then order a bunch of pizzas. That, that's right. I have I have to get those edibles, you know, and and start passing those out. Uh, and, and tell us about other countries. Uh, n- have you run into any negative outcomes in any of the countries that you've looked well, at in your you know, for, for researching your book? I haven't really looked at other countries per se, but I did go to Amsterdam a few decades ago and found it the adult way to handle it there in the red light district. I thought the, you know, the Holland people were very smart about the way they handled it. They made it available in simply one part of the city. There and you everyone go. knows about it. There you go. Now, we have to take our final intermission. Sure. When we return, we'll find out whether pharmaceutical companies have played a role in preventing the legalization of marijuana. You're listening to the Costa Report. Hi, I'm Amy Tobin, cookbook author and culinary expert. Strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. Dole has a bounty of berries ripe for the picking. Fresh berries are not only delicious, but some of the most powerful disease-fighting foods available. Researchers have found that berries have some of the highest antioxidant levels of any fresh fruits. So add a handful or two of your favorite berries to your next meal and enjoy their nutritional benefits and natural sweetness in all of your dishes, from salads to desserts and everything in between. For fresh tips and ideas from Dole's berry experts, visit berries.dole.com. And be sure to check out the pages of mouthwatering recipes. Whether it's a sweet and savory blueberry cranberry chicken salad or a simple strawberry sorbet, Dole has the perfect berry to inspire your next berry licious dish. Hi, I'm Joan London. If you're worried about your parent or loved one living alone, like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call a place for mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. Finding an apartment that was on the courtyard with the view of the trees, the view of the ducks, the stream, the creek, all of that, that was what I needed. You'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. Here's the number. To speak with a local senior living advisor, call a place for mom at 800-451-2976. That's 800-451-2976. A place for mom is a free service and you can trust them to help you. So if you're struggling to find reliable senior living information, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. To speak with a local senior living advisor, call a place for mom at 800-451-2976. That's 800-451-2976. Hi, this is Meg, a manager at the Loman Market, and the weather is starting to cool down. Now is a good time to fire up your crock pot and your Dutch oven and cook up some delicious, hearty comfort food. In the meat department, we have a variety of USDA choice roasts on sale, including tri-tips, Chuck roast, sirloin tip, and cross ribs, and so much more. In the produce department, we have red potatoes, broccoli, tender asparagus, crisp beach apples, so much more organic, as well as conventional fruits and veggies. Come visit us on our website and see what else is on sale throughout the store. That's at benlomanmarket.com. Take a look at our Mill Street Catering Events site website. Think about ordering your hams, your turkeys, your prime ribs, platters of appetizers, sandwiches, dips, party plates, whatever you want. We'll be more than happy to get together and make for you. So give us a chance and give us a call. Come see us. Take care of yourself and I hope to see you soon. This is Meg, a manager at the Loman Market, and I hope to see you soon. With today's political climate, sometimes you just want to hear normal people talk. That's what you're going to find aboard Flight 1080. Things that matter to you and your neighbor. 
your friends, your loved ones, and I'm sure we'll find something for your dog and cat. Check out the next edition of Flight 1080, Monday through Friday, 4 to 7 p.m., right here on your favorite radio station. Be sure to listen online at kseo.com, or you can download the app and listen on your smartphone. That's Flight 1080, Monday through Friday, 4 to 7 p.m. Be sure to join us. At Coast to Coast AM, we keep our friends close with this. Exorcisms are real, and on our next program, a real exorcist joins me. Father Gary Thomas of the Archdiocese of San Jose joins us, followed by Joshua Warren about spirits and hauntings on Coast to Coast AM. And we keep our enemies closer at Coast to Coast AM. Listen to Coast to Coast tonight, beginning at 10 p.m. on KSCO. Welcome back to the Costa Report. I'm Rebecca Costa, and if you're just joining us, our guest today is the former governor of Minnesota and author of Jesse Ventura's Marijuana Manifesto, Mr. Jesse Ventura. You make the point in your book that the DEA cannot be trusted. What's that about? Well, the DEA in this war on drugs, they've uh, on multiple occasions we show where they have broken into homes on drug raids and, of course, throw the Bill of Rights and all that right out the window. They break in on drug raids. They've actually shot and killed people during these drug raids, and then they find out later they had the wrong address. Mm -hmm. Nobody goes to jail. Nobody's charged with a crime or anything. I guess it's just collateral damage of war because people need to understand whenever you go to war, the most damage and the most people who suffer are civilians. They die the most. And apparently in the war on drugs, that holds true also. So, of course, if we legalize marijuana, then we don't have these kinds of uh, mistakes, these errors, and this kind of collateral damage. Exactly. And, you're, and you don't, it's, what it's also done, Rebecca, the war on drugs has caused the militarization of our police forces. Mm-hmm. It's caused them to, they, they don't look like police anymore. They look like when I was in the military. Mm-hmm. When you see them, well, that's because of the war on drugs. And it's also created, and I was told this by a 14-year Baltimore veteran cop on my show on the Internet. It's also caused this thought process we're dealing with today with the police of shoot first, ask questions later. Mm -hmm. Well, part of that is that these... The, the folks that are running these large illegal drug enterprises are so much better armed and protected. They've got well, body if, armor if you, gear that our police force doesn't have. Yeah, and if you legalize, they're out of business, aren't they? They are. That's correct. There you go. It's as simple as that. My mother, my mother who lived through the prohibition of alcohol, she told me she was a nurse, World War II veteran, North Africa, She told me the war on drugs is identical to the prohibition of alcohol. All you're doing is making criminals rich and powerful. That is true. It was true of prohibition, and it certainly is true today. Exactly. If you legalize them, they're out of business. Now, I want to go back to something. You know when you talk, Rebecca, about you don't want your doctor being on pot and all that? Yeah. Here's an argument back to you. I don't use coffee. Mm -hmm. Can't stand it. I don't need caffeine. And yet, how many caffeine addicts are out there driving around on the road, hyped up on caffeine, which is speed, and generally driving with one hand while they got their coffee cup in the other? Hey, hey, have you been watching me drive lately? Has, was, <laughs> has that been your vehicle behind mine? <laughs> but Now, think about that. I don't want you out there all hyped up on caffeine with, which only, is a one drug. Hand, with only one hand on the wheel there with a go. hot drug in your hand. <laughs> there, you, there you go. And, uh, you know, how many of us could live a day without uh, getting a caffeine headache if we didn't Jesse have Ventura. coffee? Jesse Ventura. Yes, Je- well. Because I don't like it. I've spit it out both I, times. I, I think uh, it would be mind-boggling to think of Jesse Ventura on caffeine. That's, that's I, I just, can't uh, that's handle an, it. Yeah, I, that's an image I, uh, that I, I will have a hard time removing from my head. I, I tried I it once in the Navy that we were out in the field and somebody made coffee and I took a sip. I spit it out. I said, this is horrible. Why do people drink this? 
<laughs> okay, so I have to ask you this. You also mentioned that the pharmaceutical industry sure. has been actively lobbying against legalization. Is that a fact, or is that something that we think is going on? Oh, they're, they obvious, obviously do it, because, I mean, think about it. If you could grow something in your backyard that would keep you off their pills, mm-hmm. that means they lose money, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And so I they see it as competition. Absolutely. And, 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 and as much as capitalism, we try to say we encourage competition, mm-hmm. well, there's also the other side that likes to encourage decompetition and have it all theirs and monopolize. And the pharmaceutical industry is one where, I mean, I would rather have someone smoking a joint than using Prozac. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And 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 see, and they couldn't make money then, as I said earlier. You could grow it, and your poor people could have access. Look what they did with those shots on the bee stings. You know, did you hear about that? Well, the price, yeah, the price. That yeah, they, they, they took in t- from yeah. twenty dollars up to like four hundred or five hundred dollars. That's what they'll do to you, the pharmaceutical industry. Well, also, and, I, I want to point out that marijuana, both for physical uh, use and for mental health use, doesn't have the side effects that many of these horrific pharmaceuticals do. Oh, not at all. In fact, I uh, mean, you you hear the ads at the very end. They say you may, you know, oh. uh, <laughs> it may it may create stomach bleeding, a loss of memory. You know that your limbs will fall off. And I'm thinking, no, thank you. Let's look at this even more logical. Why are you, on those ads, why do they have to put ads on TV selling their products? Doctors, if their product is good, the doctor should give it to you without them having to pay for an ad. But yet, at the end of the ads, what do they always say to tell your doctor? Well, the only way you can well, get it is through your doctor. And what they're hoping is you'll go in is, and force wait, wait, your wait. physician. Yeah, but you'll force your physician is, to give it to the you. The point is, if you're telling your doctor what you need, you never went to medical school. He or she <laughs> did. If you're telling the doctor what you need, the doctor's not a doctor. The doctor's a dealer. Well, now, that is an interesting perspective, but I will say that I, I do think a lot of people go into their doctors and sit down and say, well, what about this? Because or, I heard about that. TV. Yeah, they saw an yeah. ad. Well, but if they, they just need... looked at the side effects. Well, not just that, but the doctor should be telling you not an ad on TV. The doctor went to medical school. If you go with an ailment, the doctor should know what to give you for that ailment. You don't need ads on TV. Well, Wouldn't that lower the you prices? Would, you would think so. If you so. didn't have to do ads for 10000 a day, and they own the networks. Did you, let me tell you this story. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. He found out that they're putting this preservative in vaccines that is extremely dangerous, and they do it only so that they can produce and keep more vaccines on hand. Mm -hmm. He couldn't even get interviewed on television, and a top executive said 70 percent of our revenue comes from pharma. We don't even allow our people to speak bad of pharma or they're fired. Wow, wow, that's So wow. you got pharma controlling our media completely. Why should there be any ads for drugs on TV? The doctor should give it to you, not the television. Well, I suppose if if marijuana becomes legal, we'll see uh, marijuana ads on television well, and then maybe, maybe that'll could, even it out. <laughs> well, maybe I can, you know, I I was a light beer all-star. Remember when they had that old program? I do. <laughs> Uh, less filling and more taste. I well, do. I was a Miller Lite All Star. Me, Ray Nitschke, all of us <laughs> old athletes were. And uh, maybe they'll do the same with marijuana. We can be marijuana all stars. There you go. Now, before <laughs> I, I love this idea. I could see you all uh, getting the team back together again. <laughs> now, before we run out of time, where can listeners today to go to learn more about the Marijuana Manifesto and get a copy? Well, they can go. Uh, that's not part of my job. That's the <laughs> distributor in Skyhorse. I don't know, Rebecca. Right, right. They can get it at any any bookstore. Will have it. They can get it over the internet. Right. The way you get any book out there. Uh, like I said, I merely write them when I'm done doing all the research with my partners and writing them. Beyond that, I don't have any idea. <laughs> well, I will tell you, it is a fascinating book. Well done, well researched, and uh, I think it does. It goes a long way in allaying a lot of the irrational fears that uh, the public might have about the legalization of marijuana. And I uh, commend you also in doing the research on the history of why it has been so slow. 
to become legalized. Now, believe it or not, Mr. Ventura, that is all the time that we have. Well, but... let me state thank you, Rebecca. Well, I appreciate you. you having me on, and I appreciate your open-mindedness. We need you out there to keep exercising <laughs> our First Amendment. Well, thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> while you're here, let me also take a moment to thank you for your service to the public, and please feel free to come back anytime. All right, I certainly will. Have a great day. And that wraps up our first hour of programming today. If your station is leaving us after the first hour and you have a question or a comment to make about our interview with Jesse Ventura, you can email me at RebeccaCosta.com or drop me a note on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. And if you missed the full interview with Ventura, remember you can download the entire episode from our website at RebeccaCosta.com, Apple iTunes, Podbean, and also our YouTube channel. So there is never any reason to ever miss an episode of your favorite weekly news program. Next week, we bravely delve into the world of illicit arms trading, from secret deals between the British and Saudi governments to the boardrooms of the world's largest corporations. Andrew Feinstein connects all the dots, painting a disturbing picture of the profits that fuel warfare. Don't miss Andrew Feinstein next week right here on the only weekly news magazine that puts policy ahead of politics. Now stay tuned for a second hour of Straight Talk Radio. You're listening to the Costa Report. Hi, I'm Rebecca Costa, and I want to tell you about a new sponsor of the Costa Report, Michael Zwirling, the founder of ZBS Radio Associates. Michael, or MZ as he's known, is a self-made millionaire who's operated KSCO AM 1080 in Santa Cruz, California for over 25 years. But what's truly fascinating is that MZ didn't make his fortune in radio or by working for others. He built his wealth by thinking outside the box, and now he wants to share his success with you to help you get out of the rut of working day after day just to pay your bills. In the coming months, you're going to hear tips on this program from MZ and people who have followed his advice. Pay close attention, keep an open mind, and then check out the videos and websites he recommends. There's still opportunity in the land of opportunity. Let MZ show you how easy it is to turn your financial situation around today and do it all on your own terms. Hey, Patricia. I heard you were setting up a new home office. Yeah, Sam, I've been staring at this home office for dummies book for hours, and I still can't figure out the difference between a LAN and a WAN. We'll call user-friendly computing. They can help you set up an internal home network. But what about my wireless printer? What about it? They have all the answers to your network, workstation, or Internet problems. They even provide outsourced IT for businesses big or small. User-friendly computing provides professional guidance to you for new computer purchases or network configurations. They also provide on-site professional support to your staff for everyday computer and network issues. User-friendly computing is locally owned at 505 River Street across from the Gateway Plaza. Or you can give them a call at 831-423-9653. That's 831-423-9653. Surfing Northern California for over 65 years. This is KSCO Santa Cruz. 